Everybody, I'd like to welcome everybody to the regular town board meeting for October 23rd, 2017. I'd ask that everybody please turn off cell phones, pagers, and electronic devices. Assisted listening devices are available for the hearing impaired. I'd like to do the public hearing for the local law to amend the zoning provisions of the town of Lewiston. Local law amends 360-29B. Notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held by the town board of the town of Lewiston on the 23rd. 23rd day of October 2017 at 6 p.m. at the Town Hall, 1375 Ridge Road, Lewiston, New York, on the adoption of a proposed local law entitled, A Local Law Amending the Zoning Provisions of the Town of Lewiston, an abstract of which is as follows. The proposed local law amends Section 360-29B of the Code of the Town of Lewiston and the Zoning Map of the Town of Lewiston to change the zoning classifications for a portion of land owned by Niagara University from RR District Rural Residential to Planned Unit Development Districts. The complete text of said law is on file at the Office of the Town Clerk and is available for review by any interested person during business hours. At such public hearing, all persons interested who wish to be heard will be heard. Uh, by order of the Town Board, September 25th, 2017. Thank you, Donna. And I apologize, the, uh, the sign-in sheet is just whoever wants to speak. Is there anybody that wants to speak on the Niagara University, um, on the Niagara University uh, zoning change? <coughs> yes. Pardon. Okay, so nobody wants to speak in regards to Niagara University. Okay. Like motion. Yeah, let's move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now we'll move into the regular town board meeting. And with that, we will, um, uh, I'm sorry, real quick, we'll agenda approval. I'd like to remove the Lower River Road water issue. Mr. Uh, Brick is not available today to okay. address the board. And I believe the Cold War Veterans Exemption is still um, on hold for some legal research. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And, uh, there's not going to be any action taken on the special use chapter 360 at the top of the business. Okay. So we move those from the agenda. Anybody have anything to add to the agenda? No. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now we're moving to, um, well, we already did the public hearing. Um, resident statements. I'll follow down the list here. Are you going to Okay, I'm sorry, I apologize. So that's whether we're going to approve the local law. So I would ask for a motion to approve the no, law. Not at this point, because we'll have to uh, wait the 31 days from the, the seizure letters that were sent out. Okay, so no action will be taken on the local law. Okay. Okay, now moving on to resident statements. Um, Tracy, I'm sorry, Mc, McLaverty. That is correct. Okay. Good evening, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen. I am a resident of Lewiston. I own a property in Saddlewood and other properties in the area. On Wednesday last week, I attended the annual general meeting of the Saddlewood Homeowners Association. And it seemed that the most important item on the agenda was that most of the residents wanted to express their objection to the proposed unit development which is on the agenda here tonight. I disagreed with that most strongly and a majority vote required that the President of the Homeowners Association present that opinion here tonight that the Homeowners Association was in opposition. I don't agree. The Homeowners Association is not comprised only of a number of members, it's comprised of everybody. And even a majority vote must mention that there were objections, and I'm one of them. So I stood up and made my objection known. I could extemporaneously address this meeting 
and I would probably take a lot longer than if I just simply read some correspondence that I've entered into subsequent to that meeting. I wrote a letter to all the attendees at that meeting and tried to get all of the members home of the Homeowner Association and sent them an email, which I would like to read to you. It's quite short, it's quick. Good morning, fellow residents of Saddlewood. You will note that I have sent a copy of this mail to all Lewiston Council members. Regarding the residence directive to our homeowner president, the town, to, to present the town planning board meeting on Monday with the objections of the majority at the meeting to the developer's proposal, knowing him as I do, he will do that, even though it is against his better judgment. I place it on record that my vote was in support of the development. I suggest that you all consider the following. Our board, on behalf of the members, and in good faith, negotiated a deal with the developers. A deal which contains several benefits and concessions to the Homeowners Association. I do not know, nor do I have any connection with the developers. But I freely admit that I believe the development to be beneficial to the town as a whole, please note, to the town as a whole, and our area in particular, even though some disagree with that, as I expressed at our meeting. From my inquiries around the town, it would appear that the majority of citizens are in favor of the proposals. And I've made those inquiries. It being human nature, I doubt that many supporters will attend the meeting in order to express that. Human nature again predicts that the majority of public address attendees will be in the not in my backyard frame of mind. That is all understandable and most probable, if unfortunate. After all, our beautiful town is under threat is a persuasive rallying cry, even if the threat is not clearly defined and primarily emotive. All developers are untrustworthy and only in it for the money is another, especially when from out of town, when they have the added distinction of being obviously raiders and villagers. Obfuscation and innuendo are cheap and easy, if questionable tools. It is my belief that the developer's plan will be approved, despite the conveyed opposition of the Homeowners Association. I assure you that the Homeowners Association does not speak for me. I should do that myself. I hope that the developers are magnanimous enough to overlook our clear rejection of the agreement made by our board on our behalf. Sincerely, Tracy McLeod. Having written that, I got a couple of responses from homeowners in the association. One of them was by somebody who indicated they had perhaps not all the, inf all the information they needed and asked me to expand on my opinion. Another responded that they were very definitely in the home, in the camp of not in my backyard, and that was that. So I wrote to them both. I gave them their names. My apologies for the lateness of my reply. I'm racing the clock and the weather to complete laying stonework at my home. So it was fit in correspondence where I may. Hence the time at which I am writing this, which happened to be 3 o'clock in the morning. I see your comments and interest are legitimate as legitimate debate, and I'm glad that we continue the dialogue. Forgive me too if I sound a bit teachy, but I am all for clear thinking and examples help me with that. So let me go back a bit in time. There is a point behind this. You indicate that you have been at Saddlewood for some time and that you own two units. 
I and my wife bought 5223 Bridal Path Lane about six years ago. And I immediately joined the Homeowners Association board, only to find that the Homeowners Association was in the process of approving a very necessary contract for some $45,000 for repairs to the drainage. The building inspector knows about this. I called a halt to that until further investigation, which revealed that the developer had not conducted it to code. Actually, we found out later that Don Smith's partner had been stealing from the company for some time, and the shoddy work was part of that. The statute of limitations had run out. The town had approved the drainage and issued a certificate of occupation, and there was nothing we could do about the situation. Don, Don Smith, acknowledged that he was morally obliged, but his partner was not interested. Our managing agents and lawyers were not helpful. I presented his partner with the following. The developing company had signed the required documents to lodge with the Attorney General for the formation of the Homeowners Association, part of which was an affidavit that the development had been constructed to code. In other words, the partner, knowingly responsible for the shoddy work, had lodged a false document with the AG, on which there is no limitation of statutes, on the statutes. The repairs were done by the developers at no cost to the Homeowners Association. Regrettably not as well as they should have been, so the problem surfaced again some years later, after I had left the board. Fast forward. The Homeowners Association has changed managing agents. The board calls on me as to what solutions are available. Don has sold his property, his health is failing, and his daughter handling his affairs is not all that helpful. The board reaches advantageous accommodations with the purchaser, not just on wide arranging drainage matters, but also on land grants, high, risk, high height restrictions, and building line setbacks. Now these were something which the developer graciously offered, always asked for and gave. Bravo, bravo. The elephant is not just being kind, why should he be? Having been a development myself, residential, commercial, and industrial, I see what everybody else can see, maybe a little more in depth. Well, because he wants to change the original plans, for which he already has approval, and are not viable in today's market, to something similar but more marketable, i.e., profit or no profit. Build or don't build. If the folks at Saddlewood are happy, life goes a little easier. But life will go on. You can get on it. Now, my wife and I have been in the market for another property. We considered Saddlewood. We bought a house in Devoe in May. Niagara Falls, not Lewiston. Why not settle? Too many uncertainties surrounding property problems, rising maintenance costs. The roadways, not the driveways, are going to need some attention soon. When will the town do the work on them? I presume they have the money. Better prospects are elsewhere. That's a considered opinion and a reason why I bought somewhere else. <coughs> Maybe if the surrounding property was developed, cost savings might be possible. Maybe we could share managing agents, snow plowing, gardening, etc. More taxes for road repairs. Notice I'm giving them cogent arguments as to why I support it, not just the UN though and black nothing. Change of subject. Somewhat different, but a point to be made. What do you think about the farmers who took over a community center, armed themselves, and defied the government because they wanted a place to graze their cattle? It didn't work, did it? I believe somebody is setting up a court case to stop or try and stop this development because he wants to hunt on that property. 
would be, sorry, that was innuendo, but I come by my information reasonably well. <clears throat> Linking arms against common sense and the inevitable and losing the battle, real advantages to the homeowners association, is what? The law is there for a reason. Building codes are the law. By the way, I happen to be the new building inspector for the town of Woods. Developers are following the law and doing what they are required to do. It is their right. Yes, but it is your right to object. It is your right to object. Go for it. But unless your reasons are cogent and fit the framework of the law, you are whistling in the wind. So, like yourself, and I named one party, and you too, and I named the other party, please share with me why you are against it. I haven't really heard much of that. Against it. A lot of no, 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 no. Not much in the way of because. Oh, there are some. My children play in the road, uh, traffic problems, etc. But all of those are dealt with by your engineer quite competently, I am sure. I go on. Just so that you know, I keep my ear to the ground, and whilst I have no contact whatsoever with the developers or with the meeting tonight, having shared with you in these emails, I am informed not by them, but by somebody else, or something else that has developed. And I say to them, allow me to share something with you that came, by, came to me by way of third parties. I think it makes nonsense if some of the stated objections. Question of objections. Gentlemen, I'm sure you know, you read, but people here might not know. So please allow me to inform you. This is written to the town board members on Saturday, October the 17th. Dear town board members, it's written by the developers. My brother Joe and I have recently spoken to the Niagara Frontier Church about the status of an existing playground directly behind their parking lot. It was brought to their attention that it is located in a dangerous area directly behind the parking lot. The concern is a car could possibly go out of control with nothing to stop it. We asked if they would be interested in some of our property behind the northeast corner of their parking lot. We have revised our concept plan showing us donating 4.79 acres to either the town of Lewiston or to the church. This would give the town an opportunity to possibly turn a small playground into an actual park with a playground inside it. There were concerns about residents walking or riding bikes on Bronson Road. The walking path would possibly be built with a trail from the new park to rival path, the town road. We really feel everyone will benefit from this additional recreational land. I think that's probably true. The town may want to want the land to donate it to Lewiston first and then sold to the church with certain conditions, including a possible lease back. I'm sure the details can be worked out with everyone in the near future. I recently did a search on our realtor Max system, matrix system, and there are currently no patio homes for sale in the town of Lewiston. I believe that to be true. And there are a lot of people who are interested in patio homes particularly amongst the elderly. And Lewiston is an attractive place for the elderly. They usually have money to pay their taxes. I know there are many residents that will benefit from the style of living. We hope, all, we, hope we have all your support this Monday down, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> now, I held the floor for perhaps a little more time than would be usual. Yes, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> I think I also... I hear all the time. Yes, you did. <laughs> I mean, but you do a lot of intelligent things. Come oftener. 
They need to hear from you. I agree with you. I do believe that the content of my discussion and my presentation here tonight has been useful to the board, if not to the people who want to say no. Thank you. Thank you. Let everybody speak as long as they had to get the point across in this particular <coughs> issue. Yes, we try and limit the time, but we have not limited anybody either for or against the project. Also, I wanted to mention, I failed to mention before, Beth Soretto, Councilwoman Soretto is not here tonight. I believe we announced that at the last meeting, and uh, she is out of town, so I'm sorry I didn't bring that up, but thank you. Um, Rosemary Warren, start the clock. I'm looking, I'm looking at your own home business, home ones after his exception. See, to me, uh, my husband died at the VA over two years ago, World War II veteran. I think every veteran needs an extension. I mean, whatever exemption you're doing. Because I don't care whether they fired a gun, didn't fire a gun. I don't care whether they left the United States or didn't. They gave up their home life. They gave up earning money, because I'm sure that the service didn't pay what they might have earned in real life. They gave up just being away from home. So I don't even know why it was cold or anything, but I mean, please, a veteran's a veteran. I mean, my husband was a DAV life, life member. We did patio parties at the VA. So I mean, to me, I mean, we lived almost at the VA, so I know what goes on there. I mean, do this veteran's exemption. Don't let more people die every day. I want to address that. We never had the exemption because there was no town tax. Right. So now that there is a town tax, we would actually have to create a local law. So that's the legal part that we're looking into. So it's not, we're not we wouldn't be extending it. We're not denying it. We're just trying to make sure we do it right. Okay, okay? thank you. Uh, Nancy Korea. Um, Karen Lyle. Good evening. My name is Karen Lyle. My address is 4227 Long River Road. Um, the Lewiston Taxpayer Alliance started the rewriting of the town's ethics policy some time ago, as you recognize. Uh, the current policy is over 40 years old, close to 50 years old. Um, our first draft we provided to this town board in October of, 20, of 2016. Um, our group felt that we could help with regard to this effort. And so we embarked on a journey to update the policy. Um, it has been a collaborative effort. Um, both uh, Mr. Bax and Mr. Morial have helped our committee, as well as the uh, current Ethics Commission. So uh, tonight I'd just like to present to you the updated policy. May I approach? Yes. <clears throat> This slide is you're saying updated proposed policy. Proposed policy, correct. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Okay. That's fine. I'd like to just uh, take a moment to acknowledge everybody that took part in that process. Um, first of all, Mr. Morial, and then all of the other members of the Lewis and Taxpayers Alliance Accountability and Action Alliance. Um, a lot of people spent a lot of hours dedicated to reading, rewriting, and um, discussion of what we thought was an intelligent um, uh, new ethics policy. So if we could all read this and, and, and kind of come back to the table with some discussion and points, maybe helpful. We could probably put it on our calendar as an ongoing item. But thank you to everybody who's a part of it. Thank you. Margaret Domino. Margaret Domino. 
and he didn't speak to our neighbor. So I'd like to know the name of who he did speak to. Um, he said the developer is willing to place trees on their property to help. Well, is he going to put trees across the driveway? How are they going to use their driveway? Um, another thing, Mr. Bax questioned Mr. Rubino if the comment about the traffic study only including Upper Mountain and not Bronson Drive is accurate. Rubino said he could not answer that 100%. Why could he not answer it? Who ordered the traffic study? Um, and Mr. Moriel suggested that the Power Authority be contacted regarding the infrastructure and the blasting. Did they contact the Power Authority? Power Authority, did anybody, does anybody know if they contacted them? I mean, these seem to be, yeah, I, I wasn't at this meeting. Unfortunately, I was stuck out of town. But I did take the time to read the meeting, the minutes. So there's a lot of what appears to be, they're making fools out of you guys because they're not giving you complete answers. They're really not. If you go back and you read these minutes, I don't know if you guys do that or not, but you probably should. Um, thank you, Mr. Bax, for the letter. Um, in it, you said, Lewiston is second to none when it comes to our quality of life. Think about our quality of life on Bronson, Saddlewood, Upper Mountain, and what, what a change this is going to make in our quality of life. And as for you, Mr. Broderick, I think you've set the tone on how this project has been handled. The residents of the area have become frustrated and reacted to the way this project has been handled because of your attitude and portraying that this matter is a done deal. You have had an excuse for, discounted, and dismissed each and every concern that the large number of residents have voiced. You have defended the potential buyers and validated both them and their realtor and haven't had the due respect to the citizens. You have basically just given us a bunch of your wash. As a town supervisor, you have been extremely transparent in your view of this high density project and extremely one-sided. You have simply forgotten who you represent. And that is the citizens and their concern of the town of Lewiston. Thank you. Joe Domino. Joseph Domino, 5099 Bronson. You can pull that up. You pull that up at the bottom, They're right there. Yeah. I'm trying to make this short and sweet. Um, what I have here is over 100 petition signatures. Um, the attached petition is a formal objection to the Upper Mountain Road Plan unit development under consideration. Under consideration by the town of Lewiston board. This petition has been signed by more than 20% of the property owners of the area of the land included such proposed change of that immediately adjacent, extending 100 feet thereof, that directly opposite there too, extending 100 feet. You guys know who I am. You know where I live. Most of you have been to my house already. You've seen my concerns with the road. I've addressed safety concerns. And I've addressed, for the lack of a better term, the study that was done. My concerns are genuine. And that's, you know, and that's all I can say about the proposed road. And when we reference the 1982 plans, you know, it does show that there indeed is a road there, but it's it's designed to be a an access point, and it seems to me like it's a very important part of this new this new proposal. Okay, and and we've also heard that it's it's just a concept. This plan is just a concept. Well, I have a concept. My concept is no. My concept is no. 
and you know that the majority of residents are opposed to this, certainly if there are people who are in favor of it, let them show up. Let them voice their opinions, much like the people who are opposed to it, who care to show up and who care to, to voice their opinions. So with that being said, I'd like to present these signatures to you, sure. Mr. Broderick. And, and I'd like to end with one other thing. I have no prepared speech, but this gentleman here raised concern to that phrase, not in my backyard. Well, considering the history that Lewiston has with past developers, I'd like to change that. It's not in my backyard to not again, okay? Not again with what we've gone through with these developments. Drainage issues, real estate market questions, it's a supply and demand thing. We certainly have the supply. We have over 200 building lots ripe and ready to be built on already, and, and I kind of wonder if we should be creating more. Okay, we're like flooding the market. So, with that being said, I've said all I can say. All I ask is that when and if you guys decide to vote on this, you think long and hard about the long-term effects of this. Thank you. Steve Olajar. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Olajar. I'm a deacon at Niagara Frontier Bible Church, and I'm here to represent our position regarding the playground slash town park um, on our property. Uh, for the past several years, NFBC has been privileged to be able to lease to the town of Lewiston space for a town park slash playground as an outreach to our neighbors and community on top of the hill. Uh, this year, our lease with the town ended and we reached out uh, to continue with a new lease. It was brought to our attention that the Director of Parks may not be in favor of continuing this lease. Some concerns were the unsafe access to the park on Bronson Drive and the green space requirements uh, established by the Parks Department uh, uh, lot was encroaching on. Uh, we had submitted to the town board that we were willing to take back some of our parking lot to meet the requirements to provide the playground uh, for the community. Uh, when Joe Rubino uh, recognized our dilemma, he reached out to us and asked if there was something they might be able to do since they own the property adjacent to us on the north and west side. Uh, after meeting with uh, Steve Broderick and, Joe Rub and the Rubino brothers, Joe and John, it looks like we may be able to come up with a win-win situation for the Parks Department and the community. Uh, the Rubino brothers uh, are willing to donate property to NFBC for us to meet the green space requirements and for the town to provide a walking path from Bridal Path Lane, a bridge across Fish Creek and to the playground. Uh, this would provide a safe way to reach the park without walking down Bronson Drive and allow us to uh, possibly meet the green space requirements without disturbing our parking lot. I want to thank uh, John and Joe Rubino and Steve Roger uh, in reaching out to us and looking, and I look forward uh, to further negotiations to uh, continue to meet the needs of the community by providing a needed playground slash town park. Thank you. Thank you. That's the end of the people that signed up for it. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? Hi, I'm John Jacoby. I live at 4621 Lower River Road, Lewiston, New York. Um, I'd like to address that blasting issue. I know that uh, some people express uh, chagrin or some amusement that uh, this blasting for uh, the infrastructure there might damage the uh, reservoir in some way. The reservoir contains 22 uh, billion gallons of water. And uh, two things that would make you um, take pause. One is, when they built the reservoir, they have various wells around the, around the web, uh, reservoir, and it's done by the power authority. And what they do, they monitor these wells, 
and this way they can see if there's any seepage from the reservoir. So they recognize that it is a possibility. The second thing they do is they have annual dam failure meetings. They bring in all the first responders, and uh, they recognize the possibility there could be a breach in the wall of the reservoir. And uh, no, do I think there's going to be a catastrophic uh, failure of the wall? Highly unlikely. But if there is an existing fault, here is the reservoir, 22 billion gallons of water. Here is Upper Mountain Road. And we slope down from there to where they're doing the blasting, half mile away from the reservoir. If all the blasting that took place when they built the reservoir and all the subsequent blasting that took place in various subdivisions had a cumulative effect and caused faults unknown to us, a couple blasts there and it hits it just right, spreads that fault, what do I think would happen? I think we could get a major seepage. You think you have water problems at uh, whatever the development is? River, 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 River Walk. <laughs> Even a little leak from 22 billion gallons would be horrific. Um, there was one other point, I'm sorry. Uh, bear with me, Steve, I'm old. Um, it's probably the highlight of the thing. <laughs> but but I, I really and truly, I, I think that to hold us harmless, the town, if you approve or don't approve, the wise and prudent man would say, uh, Army Corps of Engineers, just have a look at this. Is this safe to do this blasting? I know what the other thing was. In my uh, uh, misspent youth, I worked in a factory. And when you uh, didn't have enough to do, you broke these big blocks of carbon with a sledgehammer. And uh, me being 18 years old, I'd go crazy with a sledgehammer. I couldn't break it. And this old guy with white hair, he came over and he says, kid, come here. And he took the 16-pound sledge, went tap, 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 tap. And he did this several times in a straight line, and the block just fell in half. And any stonemasons will tell you it works like that, too. The dilemma that we face is if they do a bunch of straight line blasting for this new project, you're, you're inviting a fault. And I'm not saying it's going to happen, but consult someone so we don't wind up with this major water problem that the town's responsible for. That's, that's me. It's in a nutshell. Is there anybody else who would like to speak? Good evening. Amy Wilson, 5165 Brownson Drive. Mrs. Wilson, turn, yeah. turn the mic down a little bit. A little bit? Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to start backwards, uh, asking the representative from the church, uh, wonderful idea, how nice that people can walk over a bridge, that will benefit uh, Rich Lowe and the new house, and I don't think there are any children behind in the saddle of the development, so what about the rest of the children and their parents that have to walk all the way up Bronson in order to get to the park path in order to get to that, that bridge. Back to the, um, the traffic study. I've lived on Bronson since 1984. My children, my youngest wasn't even born yet, so I raised my children on Bronson. My husband's parents built the house in 1957, so Bill essentially has lived there since 1957. People don't do 30 miles an hour on Bronson. I will tell you that right now. And just yesterday, my granddaughter left for work and was going, she was a little late, so she was going 33 miles an hour. Somebody came up behind her, honked her horn, I heard the honk, went around Haley's car on the double solid line, and another pickup came right up on Haley's bumper. He could have come off Dana, maybe, but even still, if he had gone off Dana Drive, he still shouldn't have been close enough to get on her bumper. People aren't doing 30 miles an hour, so now we have people walking their children to the playground when people are whizzing by them at 45, and they don't move over either. There's just absolutely no courtesy whatsoever. Like I said, we've been living there since 1984. So when Wally Mall was proposing all of this, even though people keep saying 1982, I think that's when they started talking about it. 
we had just moved into the house and there was a meeting at the Upper Mountain Fire Hall for the people in the area. And I remember him talking about, you know, there will be a 30-foot buffer. We all know that didn't happen. We now have two houses behind my home with no 30-foot buffer. They are right there against us. One has a fence, the other one's brand new, he's still building. Supposedly the plans that were presented can't be found anywhere in this town hall. It's as if they sprouted legs and took off. How convenient. Everything about this proposal is how convenient. And for people to say, but what's the big deal? Well, these lots are supposed to be 66 feet across. That's going to leave 10 feet in between houses. If I wanted to live in the city, I would have moved into the city. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, something isn't right. And I can feel it, and I can see it in the faces. Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak? Hello again. My name is Paul Swisher. I'm at 823 Carriage Lane in the Saddlewood Development. I was at the meeting with uh, Tracy last week, and I just wanted to clarify something. Out of the votes that were cast at that meeting, there were two votes that were in favor of development. Other than Tracy, the other vote was more as seeing it as inevitable and, you know, trying to make the best of a situation that nobody really wanted. So when it's referred to as a majority, it was actually probably about at least, I'm estimating there were probably 30 or 40 people there. So everybody except two people were against that. Um, I subsequently read at some of the emails that have gone back and forth between Tracy and a couple of other people. And my opinion is, you know, this gentleman presents himself as intellectually superior, which may or may not be true, but um, he has a, a blanket dismissal of our concerns that what this um, woman just said. I'm new to Lewiston. I've been here a year. This is the third time I'm, I'm making this statement. I came here with my wife because we love Lewiston. If I wanted to live on top of somebody and sit in traffic waiting to go to the grocery store, I would go to Williamsville. I have friends in Williamsville. Beautiful place. But Lewiston has character. And that's something that Tracy doesn't understand, evidently. For me personally, me personally, Maybe, maybe if the development goes through, maybe the taxes will go down a little bit. I would, I would be very surprised if that would be the case. But for me, paying a little bit more for space, beauty, that's why we're here. And that's something that was just, I, I have to say, he may be a, a really nice person, but at the casual dismissal of our concerns, I took offense to. So again, I, I, would, I would ask you just to try to consider Folks like these too. I mean, you have to recognize and you should acknowledge that there are sacrificial lambs here. And that's on that's on you guys, because you're gonna make the decision. You know, for me, it's not gonna make or break me. I'll I'll be I'll be happy. I'll, I may become friends with my neighbor, best friends, whoever that is. I, I'm one of the guys right at the line that's gonna get a ten foot buffer zone between whoever's on the other side of the line. And when I moved here a year ago, I was told, you know, from these builders, Don Smith and all these people, I was told that the likelihood of any development at the time I was making my purchase was very unlikely, and if it were to occur, it wouldn't happen for a long period of time. That was one year ago. Sir, you'd like to speak? Yes. I am not a resident of Lewiston at this time. However, I did graduate from Lewiston. My mother lives in Lewiston. My two daughters have businesses on Main Street in Lewiston. Very familiar with many of the people that are sitting in front of me. Your name, sir? Jerry Mann. Where do you live? And I, I live in uh, the village of Williamsville <laughs> right now. <clears throat> um, I'm just here to promote 
the Rubino brothers as quality people, the need for new development in Lewiston. I would love to come back to Lewiston. I'm getting to the age where I'm looking to downsize and things of that nature right now. My mother has a house that she's looking to downsize from. One daughter living and owning real estate in the village of Lewiston. She's happy where she is. And my other daughter renting in Lewiston, looking to move. They're, they're encouraging the project. I suggest that you approve it and that you applaud them for the interest in, in the town of Lewiston. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Supervisor, the uh, students are getting antsy and they would like to be dismissed. I think the students are seeing a good form of government here, is what they're seeing. This is better than every, every other meeting we have, so if they, if they wish to be dismissed, you can come on up and get your Well, uh, Mr. Townsend and Mr. Train, I will be able to sign your papers. Feel free to stay if you'd like to, but uh, those of you who are looking at me and saying uh, the clock is ticking. No judgment. Okay. No, I stand. <laughs> The gentleman in the green shirt is related to Mr. Townsend, your uh, teacher there, so make sure you are very polite. <laughs> if you stand up, you're going to have to speak, though. Oh, wow. <laughs> would, would anybody else like to speak, um, either for or against? Yes, sir. Excuse me, my name is Earl Schultz. I live in the town of Athens. I'm here to speak on behalf of the Rodino Brothers. I work for guys one I'm sorry? Excuse me. I, I work for Guy's Lumber Company and I've worked at several projects that the Rubino Brothers have done. I don't get all their business. I get some of their business like everybody else. <clears throat> I'd just like to let everybody know that through the 10 plus years that I've done business with them, I've seen a lot of these board meetings. I've seen a lot of people say, not in my backyard. Nobody likes change. However, these are the most qualified people I've ever done business with as far as getting a job done and making the people that do buy these homes happy. I've stood shoulder to shoulder doing repair work for these people at all hours and on weekends when customers complain about something not being done right, they're at the, they're at the task, they get it done. <clears throat> the other thing is, I have a, a document here which I'd like to leave with you and I can provide more of them. It happens to be from the National Association of Home Builders and it's an impact study done by the government paid for by the government and by the builders of exactly 100 patio homes or single family homes in the economic impact of which it has in a community. Most people that are naysayers don't understand the real impact and what it can do and I'd like to let this... You can bring it up. things as I was sitting here listening to this I heard a gentleman say that the majority had 20% of the people that had signed a petition 20% is not a majority where I come from I live in the town of Akron I hunt right in my backyard I'm a bow hunter I'm an avid outdoorsman I have 80 acres of land behind me when that gentleman decides to sell it and put houses back there or patio homes I have to move or choose to live with it that's just the way things are in this world we have a couple people that are squeaky wheels about not getting what they want because they don't really understand the fact that there are other people's opinions. When other people's opinions are dismissed and a few people, the minority, are left to rise to the top, those are the people that generally come out. Most people that are for this development are sitting at home enjoying themselves. They're not going to get out of their way and do things to come down here and support. But if you circulate that document that I gave you to the local business people, or we do, or somebody else, and you see that, you're gonna have a lot more people in here. You'll have to bring in chairs. <laughs> this is a good impact for the community. There's people that live all over Lewiston that their homes are too big. They wanna downsize, they don't wanna leave home. They're gonna move into these patio homes. So you're gonna have people moving from one end of town to the other. Most of the people that live in patio homes have zero impact on schools. These are empty nesters. So they're not gonna be a drain on your school system. Most of these people drive less than 50 miles a week. And as far as the traffic crawling up that person that you were talking about earlier, call the police, not the town board. Have them set up a radar check there. You know, that happens out in my town of Akron, too. The street I live on is unposted. It's 55 miles an hour. If you drove down my street at 55 miles an hour, you'd be willing to kill yourself. But that's just the way the ball bounces. And I'd just like to say that these are good people, and I understand the concerns of the people that don't want it in their backyard, but that's all part of it. Thank you, Carl. My name is Jerry Wild. I'm not a resident. I do live in Williamsville. 
Perinder, Chief TV on Niagara Falls Boulevard. I'm in charge of marketing and advertising. I'd like to follow up with what the gentleman just said. Uh, we do studies of um, different towns that we have not advertised in. And one of the things that we look at is when sales are made, where are the new sales coming from? And uh, point, just a point to be made, about two or three years ago, we had never advertised in Clarence before. And Clarence is about as far away from my store as Lewiston is. We advertised in Niagara Gazette before, but we never came up as far with uh, Niagara Frontier Publications. And so when we advertised for the first time in Lewis and uh, in Clarence, we looked at the, the number of sales that were made from Clarence and we went to a map online. And I don't have an exact number. I was reminded by the gentleman in front of me, or before me. And uh, many of those sales were coming from new developments of condos, of townhouses, of patio homes. And I had one conversation with an individual who I did not know they're at that home, but they said they moved to Clarence, they had downsized, they were empty nesters, and they didn't know how wonderful Clarence Hollow was and uh, the town as you go in through Clarence Hollow. And I think about Lewiston in the same way. Uh, people who could be coming here, as Mr. Mann had just said, uh, to downsize and discover the quaintness of the town. So I believe that this would be a good thing knowing the quality of work that the Rubino brothers do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> good evening, everyone. My name is Patricia Nashwinner. I live at 888 The Circle. I'd like to clarify to um, the gentleman from Guy's Lumber that um, the petition has been signed by more than 20% of the property owners of the area of the land included in the such, such proposed change or that immediately adjacent to the property. So it's more than 20%, it's not 20%. And that is according, that's pursuant to New York State Town Law, Section 265 in Town of Lewiston Zoning Ordinance, Chapter 360, Sections 360 to, um, to 123-4A. So it is more than 20% that the people that are in opposition, just so everybody knows. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. My name is Roger, but I, I currently live in Lockport, New York. I spent a lot of time in Lewiston, and I can attest to the fact that there is no patio homes for sale in Lewiston. I'm looking to relocate into Lewiston. There is a demand for them, and I've met the Rubino brothers because they're looking at developing that. So there is a need for it. There is a demand. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Real Estate Center, I just have one thing to say, and not to you guys, to Carl. That is Nick Carl. Earl. 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 Sell them your 80 acres. They have a plan. <laughs> 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 no, oh, Earl doesn't own 80 acres. Just to clarify. He said he no. owned 80 acres. No, yeah. But we're not getting into it. Okay. Anybody? Would anybody else like to speak? Yes. This is the standard of objections. Okay. Well, everybody has a right to their opinion, like you stated yourself. Thank yes. you. spoken to you before. I'm Elizabeth Doherty, MD, Mr. Broderick. You called me Mrs. Doherty before. I apologize. Okay. It wasn't intentional. Um, I just want to respond to the gentlemen who have defended the Rubinos. I don't think any of this is about the quality of their work. I'm sure they do wonderful work. It is the impact on our neighborhood and our environment that we are concerned about. Uh, as far as hunters are concerned, Mr. Uh, is it McLaverty seemed to downplay the, the concern of the hunter who likes to hunt on this undeveloped land. I don't like hunting, but I also understand that people do. And as long as there is undeveloped land and there's no objection by the owners, that's his right too. And that's one of the beauties of this area, that we still have so much undeveloped land. Now, as far as the demand for patio homes, I don't exactly understand the appeal of a patio home versus some of the units we have in Saddlewood. I just, I mean, there's probably an appeal to one more than the other. I don't know. 
But for the folks that are looking to downsize, we have some lovely units still available in Saddlewood that aren't selling, including some of the very nice end units, which are ranch style uh, and wonderful for people who are downsizing. When you're in these units, you're also not aware of your neighbors. They are so well built. So I, I don't see where the difference really is if you are connected to the house next door you versus having 10 feet in between you. So I just wanted to address those issues. Again, there's lots of available units in Saddlewood if there is such a market for this type of, of home, uh, as well as the fact that, again, these gentlemen are from out of town, they're from other unit, or from other towns, they don't really understand the impact on our community. And that's not to deny that the Rubino brothers aren't just terrific builders. Thank you. Joe Rubino, um, I would just like to thank uh, everybody that uh, obviously spoke uh, in favor of our project and our, our reputation. Uh, we have high standards, my brother John and I. And let's get back to the facts that the land in question is zoned plan unit development. So it is zoned for what we are proposing. Uh, we're not asking for a rezoning. It's not zoned agricultural. Uh, it's not zoned industrial. It's zoned plan unit development. There's a process that the town puts in place for a developer or a landowner to develop his land. And that's what we've done. And, uh, we appreciate uh, working further with the town. Uh, obviously, the new developments with the church and the park. Uh, we're excited. I think the church is excited. And hopefully, that uh, helps out residents in the town that would like to utilize a playground in that neighborhood um, I, where, where I live and uh, many of my friends. Um, we don't have the opportunity to walk to a park when our kids were a little older through college now. But we would put them in the car, we would take them to the park, and they would have a great time. So again, I, I thank the, the board for your uh, effort and, and time in the, uh, this matter. I know it's been complicated, many meetings, but we're, we're here, and uh, uh, I appreciate all your help. Thank you. Okay, I believe that'll end the, uh, the resident statements. Um, Supervisor, yes. I would just like to comment. I appreciate how respectful everyone was to each other, Absolutely. and I hopefully they continue it as they're leaving later this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Um, department head statements. Yeah. Okay. Is that nothing to report? Okay. Tim Masters, building yeah. inspector. Okay. Marty, you're on the agenda, correct? Bill Conrad, our deputy supervisor. No. Uh, Landon, you're on the agenda. Um, Jeff Rear couldn't be here tonight. Mike Dashnell, are you still here? Do you have anything? Yeah. Um, Mike Townsend, our water department. Uh, yes, the maintenance on the hydrants is continuing, uh, winterizing and maintenance. I want to thank Dave Train for helping out with the black topping. All the black topping is done for the winter for the water department, all of, for the repairs. I'd also like to thank the town board for uh, all its efforts in the last couple of years to get the water project going, working together, and uh, working towards completing uh, that. Real quick, Mike, I know you, you brought this up before and you explained it to me before. You're, I know you're into winterizing fire hydrants. Yeah. How many fire hydrants do we have in the town? Approximately 900. And how long does it take you to winterize those? Uh, it takes a good couple of months because we open and lubricate them, and if there's any broken ones, we have to fix them as we go along. Okay. 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 Any questions? No, thank you. Mike. Thanks, Mike. Dave Train, <clears throat> Highway Superintendent. There are a couple, of, a couple of things that just came up today. One of them pass out, one of them already did. Jersey barriers. It's going to be for the bottom of Indian Health. We had an accident there 
couple weeks ago when someone came through and drove through and tore out some of the older ones that we had there. I'd just like to update them. These are for 16 Jersey Barriers, it comes to 57 2285 This is the one I'd like to buy. It's $230 more expensive than you know, my lowest bid. But these all set up with the solar flashers. They're taller and they uh, seem to be well built compared to the other one. It was a lot shorter and won't accommodate any solar flashers or anything. So I'd like board approval for this. What do you fill these with? Uh, I'm going to fill them with sand. You can fill, also fill them with water. Okay. So this will make the bottom part of the day in the hill. And the top part. Top part too. Yes. Safer and less ugly. Less <laughs> ugly. Yes. <laughs> Safer, it depends on the drivers. But yes, it will. And it should be seen. I'll have flashers up there. Um, it'll be removable at the bottom so emergency vehicles can come through. So it'll accommodate and solve some of the problems until we figure out what we're doing with it. Uh, we've looked at other solutions for problem. We do not have the property. We do not have the access. We, this we, is, yeah, we have to nothing to put a call to stack in. We don't own enough property, and we can't do that in the earth. It just doesn't fit in the time problem. I'm in favor of it, and I'd like to make a uh, motion, but I want to make sure we know how to do it properly. What was the cost? Fifty-seven twenty-two eighty-five. And this is the cheapest of three bids, no, right? This no, this is the most expensive of the three bids. By a total of two hundred and thirty dollars. Are they? Excuse me, are they all the exact same type no, of barrier? The other ones are shorter, and that was a problem. I couldn't get all three, I couldn't get them all on the side. This is a taller. And, uh, is this the only company that sells that particular barrier? It seems to be this way. I put out for 10 bids, and I got three back, and this is the only one. And there's, there's 16 units, and it's only $230 or more. My only other question would be, is there a state bid for this? Uh, we couldn't find one. Okay. Go on. Uh, question? Do these accommodate the flashes and the others don't? The other ones don't. Is this being paid for by your budget? Who is she? I'm sorry. Yes. Based on, the traffic, based on the recommendation of the uh, highway superintendent and the uh, <coughs> speciality of this particular Jersey barrier, I move for acceptance of the bid of $5,722.85. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? $85. Okay. All in favor? Aye. So Step one. One more. Wolf Run has already been dedicated and accepted and approved. The Department of Transportation needs it in this wording. Whereas, Wolf Run was constructed as a town road in accordance with plans and specifications prepared by engineering, and whereas the two-lane road is 0.33 miles in length and consists of a new drainage system and curves. Whereas, construction of Wolf Run has been completed in accordance with as-built drawings and has been accepted for maintenance by the town and is currently open to vehicle traffic for the public now and therefore be it. Resolved that Wolf Run shall be included in the 2017 Town Local Highway Mileage Inventory of the Town Streets and be it further. Resolved that the New York State Department of Transportation is requested to include Wolf Run in the Town of Lewiston Inventory of Streets. Move to approve the motion, or sorry, the resolution as drafted. Second, so because it was so eloquently presented. That's right. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any questions on the matter? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I, and I wrote this and did a check with the lawyers if I had enough whereas. <laughs> thank you. I did. I did. I did. I did. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. I believe that'll do it for department heads. <coughs> On to audit payment. Excuse me. Excuse me. Department head. Oh, no. I, okay. I thought she had her own. Uh, no. You were on the. Okay. It's a great microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a letter from the Senior Center. They are asking that uh, they have since purchased a new lawnmower for the Senior Center and they are requesting that the old lawnmower be uh, declared obsolete. We declare an excess. Excess and obsolete. Make a motion to declare the, the current lawnmower for the 
Senior Center. Somebody will come Could we also reach out to the other department heads to see if uh, somebody else would like it for spare parts? No, we go out to bid for auction. Do you want, I, my motion is to declare it excess for first, right? Okay. Second. We have a second. We have a second. Question? Bill, you have a question? I just want to make sure that the, uh, Mike Deschauer or, or um, Dave Train have a chance. Yeah. That they probably don't want it. They uh, know it. It's it's right. Right. What is that? I missed the whole thing. Do you want a lawnmower? Do you want a lawnmower? <laughs> We're good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. He's always thinking of you. Thank you. Always thinking of you. That's a good question. Because they they have taken apart pieces of other equipment and used them for other things. Okay. So at least check with Jeff Ritter first. Okay. So we can declare an excess for that department. Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we'll table the motion. As to how to dispose of it until our, if we put that on old business for our next meeting. Okay. And we'll check with Jeff uh, and the others. It would be expedient. Why don't we just say that, uh, give it Jeff an opportunity to look at it, and then if he declines it, we we'll put it out for auction. Just so it's all right. Yes. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 